G'day Aspiring Engineers. Today we're going to do number 7 of the basic tutorials, 7 out of 16, and this is the revised version. And while we're doing this nice simple model, we're going to be exploring some of the stuff that's on the right click menu. You would have seen a few other really useful parts of the UI. There's the S key and there's also this right click function and it's really pretty uh, and it takes a bit of practice. You're going to have to practice this one a fair bit before it becomes a part of the way that you work. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. Right, here's Fusion 360. Let's do the usual. First thing we'll do is save our work. We'll call this part seven. Uh, Turn on the visibility of the origin so that we can see that. Let's make sure that we've got capture design history now, before I click on that, you'll see that there's no timeline uh, down at the bottom of the screen. Click on Capture Design History, and there it is. We need to have those features showing up in the timeline at the bottom. Right, ready to go. And what we're going to be doing is focusing on the right-click menu this time. So let's right-click, and there's the sketch and the line tool. Normally, we'd be choosing the plane first, but if we're doing it by the right-click menu, First of all, we click on Sketch, and then we click on the tool that we want to sketch with, and then it asks us to select the plane. So what I'll do is I'll choose the back plane. It turns to face us. The line tool is active, and we're ready to go. You'll notice from the drawing that this part is not symmetrical, and so uh, we'll just draw the uh, draw the profile. And what we'll do is we'll try to make use of our point of origin and put that in a sensible place. Uh, so I'll start right there do a horizontal line across to the left, click and drag to get a curve, uh, let's do another horizontal line, a vertical line, click and drag, Whoop. and I'm going to just finish off by going back to that point of origin. So the next thing I want to do is put some geometric constraints on here, but if I right click we don't get geometric constraints here, they're in the toolbar up above so Click on the vertical constraint button first and you see the vertical constraint tool is attached to the cursor. This one is, you can see that they've got the parallel thing to this one here, so there's no point putting one on there. There's no point putting one on here because it's perpendicular to this parallel one. And so we'd get an over-constrained condition if we tried that. Let's just demonstrate that. Yep, over-constrained. But this one here that is definitely off vertical I'll click that with the vertical tool and it snaps to vertical and puts the little icon there for vertical. Next thing we want to do is uh, get a few more of these tangent constraints working where there's one missing here and there's one missing here. So I click on the tangent constraint tool and you see the tangent icon is attached to my cursor. Click on the lines that need to be made tangent there as well as over here. and the tangent icons are applied. All right, let's see what happens when we right click again. We want the dimension tool. The dimension tool is not easily available here, but we can click on sketch and we can see it there over on the left. And you'll notice that blue segment that appears uh, when we mouse around here on the right click menu. But let's uh, try hitting the D key. The, the tool is now active. It's highlighted in the toolbar above. And what I want to do is put a dimension between the point of origin of the curve on the left there and the right hand side of our sketch. Put that down here and from our drawing you can focus see. the field here, type in 150 and press enter. Then the whole sketch rescales. Now we need another dimension between the point of origin of the curve up the top here and the base of the sketch. And that one is supposed to be 100. Uh, somehow we've lost the tangent constraint there, so I'll put that back on. Click on the tangent constraint and click on the two lines one after the other where the ta tangent constraint is needed. The next thing we want is D for dimension. Hit the D key for the dimension tool. Put that dimension up here and the, you can see from our drawing that I'm supposed to have a 25 millimeter dimension there for that radius. I've still got the dimension tool active and you'll see from the drawing that this one is supposed to be 20. That will do for our first sketch. Right click and see what's available. We've got the press pull tool 
here, but not the extrude tool. Well, it so happens that the press pull tool will give us the same effect as the, the extrude tool. We can either click on that uh, press pull tool. We're in the press pull tool now, and we have the press pull dialog there. But what I'm going to do is cancel that. We're back in our sketch, and it would have been much easier for us just to hit the e, the e key. If I do that, we drop straight into the extrude tool. I can uh, click and drag with the middle mouse button to get an isometric view, then grab hold of our little arrow, get that started in the right direction, and type in 20, and that would do it. However, let's uh, go back a step. I'm going to um, right click on that uh, feature and delete it in the timeline. Uh, let's edit the sketch that we were working on. Now, here's the right click menu, and you can see that press pull is up in that sort of 45 degree segment. And uh, here's how that works. If we've just finished our sketch, we could either hit the E key, or what we could do is just press down on the right mouse button and drag it off in that direction. And I have to do it a little bit quicker, and we've dropped into the press pull tool. Push down the middle mouse button and drag, we get an isometric view. Click on the profile, and the press pull tool turns into the extrude tool, and we're really extruding. That's just the way the press pull tool works. Type in the 20, and there we have it. One more thing we need to do now is put the fillet in the little corner in the part. Right click, and it just so happens that uh, the things that make sense are available here on the right click menu. Uh, notice that we have got not 2D dimensional sketching tools, although we can start a sketch, but we do have 3D tools, including the fillet tool, and there it is. And let's choose the edge that needs to have a fillet, and you see from the drawing that this edge has a 40 millimeter fillet, and that's it. And there's only one more feature to do here, and that is a sketch on the front face for the two holes in the part. So let's right click again, see what we can do. And there's the sketch, there's the sketch tool, and we can get the circle tool here. Fusion 360 wants us to choose the face or the plane that the sketch is going to be on. So we'll go for that front face, turns to face us, and of course the circle tool is still active. I'll put one circle here and another over there. I do want the concentric constraint tool now, so if I right click, it's really not available, so I'll go and get it from the toolbar above and uh, click on the circle and then the curve. Do the same over here. The next thing we want to do is hit the D key and we've got the dimension tool. Much quicker to use the keyboard's shortcut than the right click menu. And uh, this one has a diameter and you notice that we're measuring a diameter because the dimension is going to be measuring from one side of a circle to the other. That's a diameter, as you know, not a radius. And so I'll type in the diameter measurement that we want, which is 25. And then we'll do the other one. And this one has a diameter of 20. And, uh, we've finished our sketch. So rather than right click and go for press pull or whatever, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the E key. And we've got the extrude tool. We didn't get the isometric view, so I've just got to press down the middle mouse button and drag in order to get the isometric view. The extrude dialog box is asking for the profiles, so that's the, the one circle and the other. Take hold of the little arrow, drag it backwards. Notice that we've got a red pre-highlight there, which is what we get when we're expecting to have a cut. And we also want the extent to be through all. When I click OK, then uh, the part's complete. We do have a sketch that's visible here, uh, and I can go into sketches and make that invisible, and uh, there we have it. So how did you go? You're going to have to practice that right click. You're going to have to get familiar and sort of learn what things you can expect to see on that right click menu, and then for the gestures you've got to work out which direction to swipe in. And we'll see you next time.